You guys want to do brakes on a Datsun? This is a 2014 Nissan Sentra SR. Oh boy. Well, this young lady tells me that she has a grinding sound coming to a stop below 20 miles per hour. Yeah, I can definitely hear it. Okay, let's get her inside. Let's see if I can do it without running everything over. Oh yeah, she's squeaking like crazy. Well, I'd say it's pretty obvious what the problem is. These rotors are super crusty. And then, if you can see, way down in there, come on. That pad's actually touching the squealer. So that would be the source of our noise. Do, 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 do. do not see a lot of Nissans in this area. We do kind of have a dealership for them not too far away, but just don't really see them very much. Especially not cars. Uh, once in a while you'll see a SUV like a Xterra or a Rogue or something like that. Pretty rare to see one of these things. We'll hang that up out of the way and you can see now how bad our pads are that one's completely gone so no surprise it was making some noise He's a little crusty. There we go. There we go. We're getting some new rotors for sure. Oh, these look like they're seized in the bracket pretty good. Let's see what happens here. Okay, not too bad. Pins are nice and free. Should be just fine. Well, the rear pads really aren't too awful bad. The problem is just the corrosion on these rotors. Oh, that caliper's seized up. Oh yeah. She ain't a moving, folks. Oh, that'll be fun. This is like the Chrysler style. So it has the, the pin and the bolt is all one piece. So it threads into the caliper and then that becomes the pin into the bracket. So 
That's not good. That is not good. Oh, no, that's not so bad. It's time for some shocks. Nissan was real nice about where they put these. Where they put the hose here for the caliper. folks. Oh. There we go. Yeah, she's a little rusty. Good thing we're doing the back brakes then, even though it doesn't really need pads. Definitely needs attention. Boy. That caliper's pretty rusty. It's a 2014, by the way. It's only six years old. It's time. I ran the calipers through the sandblast cabinet. Everything's cleaned up where the abutment clips are gonna go. These ones are pretty nasty. So we're gonna pull the pins out here, slide pins. Real quick, check those. They're a little bit dry. So we'll put some sill glide on there. Now, there seems to be some controversy with the Purple Permatex brake goo. Guys are telling me it's not compatible with rubber, that they're having problems with the boots swelling. I don't know. I tried to call Permatex customer service. Nobody answers the phone. So if I get an answer from them by the time I post this video, I will be sure to include that. So for the time being, we'll use this, the Silk Glide. I know it's safe for rubber. In a previous brake job video, I used some of this Permatex Ceramic Extreme brake parts lubricant. It's the fancy purple goo. And I used it on the backs of the brake pads, under the brake hardware, and I also used it on the caliper slide pins. And I had a number of comments in that video from guys saying that this stuff is not safe for rubber and that you shouldn't use it in any application where it could contact rubber, such as a caliper slide pin. I know that Erico the South Main Auto Channel, he uses this stuff pretty frequently and I've seen a number of comments to the same effect on his YouTube channel to the point where I think he's actually stopped using this stuff on the, the YouTube channel because probably because he wants to avoid having so many of these same comments. Anyway, I was curious, is this stuff really safe for rubber? So I called the toll free number here on the back. and nobody answered the phone, but I left a message. And a few days later, I got a call back. And actually, I didn't answer the phone, and they left a message. 
And I would play that message for you, but I did not get permission, so I don't want to you know, get in trouble there. But I will paraphrase what they told me. Basically, what he said is that this purple ceramic extreme brake parts stuff is safe for any kind of EPDM rubber, which he said would include most rubbers used in brake parts. They're mostly going to be EPDM rubber. However, there are exceptions, and they can't guarantee that all of the rubbers used on caliper slide pins and, you know, whatever, piston boots or whatever, are going to be EPDM rubber. So what he said is they actually have a better product out now. It's a silicone-based ceramic brake parts lubricant. And he recommended not using this for the caliper slide pins to use the silicone-based stuff. And actually, he suggested just using the silicone-based stuff for everything, which I don't know why they still make this or if they're going to phase this stuff out in favor of the silicone stuff. I really don't know. Now, for years and years, what I used was this stuff here, Silglide. Now, it's not actually made by Napa. It's just this is the Napa packaging. Silglide's available from a variety of sources. Anyway, I've used this stuff forever. I use it in any kind of o-ring that I'm putting together and I've used it extensively for brake hardware because that's one of its applications and it doesn't cause swelling of any kind of rubber components. So probably what I'm going to do, I'll go back to using the sill glide for the caliper slide pins and then I'll use up this ceramic extreme purple goo for the rest of the hardware and the brake pads. Uh, and then when this stuff is gone, I'll buy some of the Permatex silicone-based ceramic lube and we'll try that out. So anyway, I thought that might be helpful. I don't want to tell anybody what kind of goo to use in their shop. It's totally up to you. Is it safe for rubber? Kind of. Maybe not 100%. And maybe we should be a little more careful with it. So that's all I want to say about that. Now, another question I had on these caliper slide pins, see this, hang on, come on, see how one of them has a little rubber sleeve on the end and the other does not? So I've heard a lot of theories about that little plastic sleeve. Guys are saying it's to prevent rattles, other guys are saying it keeps the caliper or the brake, outside brake shoe from dragging. What I want to know is why don't they put one on both pins? Why does it only have one pin that has the plastic pin, has, has a plastic sleeve? I've never known the answer to that. So maybe someone, a smart person in the comment section, will finally be able to settle that for me. Doesn't really matter. Just always been curious about that. Some cars don't even have them. So we will lube up under the abutment clips using the purple magic goo and our kit comes with new abutment clips which we will use I'm using the CarQuest Platinum Painted Rotors again. Good luck with them so far. You don't even really have to clean them off. They come in a sealed bag. They really don't have any oil on them. I'm going to take a break. I think I'm going somewhere else for a while until these black flies dissipate. It's really hot and sunny outside so they're all coming in the shop trying to get cool I guess and then they're biting me while they do it. Anyway, a little bit of blue Loctite on the caliper bracket bolts. Grab my torque wrench. Torque that to spec. Wrong way. Ella.
caliper is already cleaned up. Grab our pushback tool. Can you guys even see that? Probably not. Doke. Little bit of blue Loctite on the caliper pin bolts. Got my other torque wrench. Click, click. Okay, front side done. Got my landscaper on the job this morning. Oh, sorry about the fan noise, guys, but bugs are driving me crazy. I can't work when I'm crazy. Crazy enough already. Anyway, we'll reuse our little plug here from the for the parking brake adjuster. Even though no one ever adjusts or uses their parking brake. And my light's dead. Now this caliper bracket had the pin that was sticking and attempting to seize up. So I went ahead and Cleaned it off with the wire wheel. And I've got some brushes here. Hopefully we can find one that's the right size. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Feels good.
So the clips they sent me with the new brake pads are wrong. They're too wide, they're for a wider rotor. So we're gonna have to use the old ones over again, but they're in pretty decent shape, so I don't think it'll be a problem. Probably not ideal, but these are stainless steel clips, they should be fine. So the rear shoes only have a squealer on the outside and again it was on the trailing edge so we'll put it back on the trailing edge. Should be just fine. Caliper I kind of cleaned up. It's pretty rough. And I've already pushed it back. Dunsky. Oh, there goes the fuzz. Of course, you never start a nut with an impact or a socket for that matter, always by hand. This car is fancy. It's got the security lug nut. I think that's hilarious. Well, unfortunately, we got a problem with this tire. We got a pretty big chunk missing here and it's it's down to the cords, so it's definitely not safe to drive it like that. Well, that was a front tire. I went ahead and moved it to the back 
just so it'd be a little bit safer in case it blows out, but she's gonna need a new skin. Oh, pump up the old brake pedal, there it is. Not quite yet, there we go. The oil has changed, let's go for a little test drive. See if our metallic grinding sound has gone away. Went ahead and ordered two new tires. Just gonna replace both of the tires on that axle, which is always a good idea. Let's see, we got AC in this pig. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah. Whoa. Yeah, nice stop. Oh, this is a CVT or must be a CVT. Nissan loves those. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. It's like driving a giant snowmobile. Welcome to Illinois, baby. Road construction. <laughs> That's how we do it. All right, here we go. Take our giant snowmobile for a little test drive. Ah, it's so weird. I don't know how people get used to these CVTs. Here we go. Oh yeah. It's like Formula One brakes. This thing's a hot rod. Must be what the SR stands for. Super rod. Oh yeah, black gold right there. Best farmland in the world. What is it, pup? Yeah, I know. I'll bail you out again. I will. All right. See, this is how you get in these situations. Are you happy now? Okay. So it's my habit to use the torque extension for my initial torque then drive the car. And then do a final torque with the torque wrench. Well, there we go, folks. Brake job on your 2014 Nissan Sentra SR. Pretty simple, straightforward job. No surprises. And that's the way we like it. I will tell her about the shocks. I went ahead and ordered two tires. But for right now, we're done. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time.